I don't know. I'd say I'm reasonable. Okay, that's completely unreasonable. You have no idea just how reasonable I have been. Reasonable synonyms are sensible, rational, practical, fair, appropriate. Fit, fitting, suitable, logical. All things I would definitely say describe me. Do they describe you? Welcome to I'm Reasonable with Zaynab Johnson. I'm reasonable. <laughs> Hey, you guys. Hey, 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 yo. It's crazy because I want to say this has been an unreasonable 12 or 16 hours, but the reality is it really hasn't. Some things have been not ideal, but I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning and went for a run, and so I feel like I can't even complain. I'm going to take these glasses off because I know I'm out here looking like Mary J. Um, I'm looking like the last bad boy artist when it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, ain't nobody trying to look like a bad boy artist right now. Let me take this gum out, right? I am in Denver, Colorado. I'm at a hotel uh, and there's nothing around here. And so I probably won't eat this weekend. Um, anywho, let, welcome to another episode of I'm Reasonable with Zaynab Johnson. I actually taped the episode last night. Look. You have no idea just how reasonable I am. But as I was editing it, the sound, I kept hearing a, like, like a ring, like, eh, and I was like, and then I tried to denoise it, and that just made the sound, it just made me sound really far away, and I was like, dang, this was, I recorded one hour and 53 minutes for you guys. It's not going to be that today, but I recorded one hour and, 50, one hour and 53 minutes for you guys, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to make them listen to this for an hour and 53 minutes. And so I hope that the um, volume on this is not too bad, but I just got off the plane. I just got to the hotel and I'm like, I, I have to do this. So um, happy Friday, ha happy 1st of November, happy post Halloween, all of those good things. Um, on a scale from blowing your own hands off <laughs> with firecrackers, using fireworks to blow your own hands off from that to Janelle Monet as E.T. How reasonable have we been this week? Um, Y'all notice all the young girls dressed up as Halle Berry this year? I also notice, and I maybe this is like social media, the internet, video, um, you know, everybody seems to have like a videographer team and hair and makeup, and, and everybody seems to be able to shoot their own music videos now. But I feel like now it's not so much the costume, but also people kind of like acting out what that character is doing. Anywho, also... I don't want to be like, remember back in the day? Because it's not about back in the day, but I feel like when I was growing up, fireworks were reserved for the 4th of July. Now, it don't matter the day or the time. Fireworks, fireworks, fireworks. It's Tuesday, fireworks. It's Saturday, fireworks. It's your birthday, fireworks. It's Halloween, fireworks. It's Christmas, hot fireworks. It's Thanksgiving, fireworks. It's fireworks, fireworks. You had a, you had a sporting event, fireworks. Uh, the other day I got my hair braided and the braider came to my house and it was so many fireworks. She was like, I said, I know it sounded like we just got our independence from Great Britain, right? Um, I know I'm late. I'm, I ain't even mean to be this late. I knew I was going to be late, but I ain't even mean to be this late. <laughs> but in the illustrious words of Aubrey Graham, I do not know his last name. Um, oh, no, that is his last name. Drake, in the illustrious words of Aubrey Drake Graham, better late than never, but never late is better. Damn, that don't really suit what I'm doing right now because I'm definitely late. Anywho, do you guys know where that comes from? Better late than never? Never. That actually comes from the Canterbury Tales. If you don't know what the Canterbury Tales, it's like required reading in like middle school, high school, depending on your reading level. 
But I had no idea that that was the origin of Better Late Than. I definitely knew it was not Drake, but I did not think that it came from the Canterbury Tales. Anyway, it does. My computer's over here. That's why I'm looking over here. Um, all of this, this ain't even taupe. What is this? This, the room, whatever. I'm not going to get off topic. I am not going to get, okay, so the reason why I'm late, y'all, is because Michelle Obama. I don't even know how else to say it. We're going to get into it, though. Um, I would like to remind you guys that um, we are four days away from the election. If you're in the United States and you are legally able to vote, then, you know, I encourage you to cast your vote. Uh, and I know that there are a lot of people, I can sometimes get into this mind state, although I, I always find a way out of it. I know that there's some people that's like, it don't matter. It don't matter who I vote for. Um, let's say it does. Let's say that there's like a tiny, 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 like a 0.000001% chance that it does. Then exercise that, that power, that 0.000001% power. Um, Today, we are going to talk about Megan Thee Stallion's confession uh, on her Amazon documentary. We are going to talk about Trump lying on Beyonce. Um, and because this was requested, I am going to speak very briefly on Shaquille O'Neal's appearance on Angel Reese's podcast. And finally, on our Ask Z today, uh, we got some porta body, some porta potty action, okay? Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about where you guys can see me live. Um, if you're in Denver this weekend, November 1st and 2nd, I'm here this weekend. Um, I'm at Comedy Works with some other comedians, so come check us out. I'm with Ian Edwards, Mike Young, Shantae Wayans. Um, the, the show should be really fun, so yeah, come check us out. Next weekend, November 8th and 9th, I will be in St. Paul, Minnesota at Laugh Camp Comedy Club. That's November 8th and 9th, St. Paul, Minnesota. November 11th, I will be in Amsterdam. Am. November 14th, I'll be in Geneva. No November 15th and 16th, I will be in Paris. November 18th through the 23rd, I will be in London. November 29th through December 1st, I will be in Ontario, California. <laughs> December 4th, I will be in Austin, Texas. December 6th through the 8th, I will be in Houston, Texas. Um, and then December 31st, New Year's Eve, I will be in San Jose, California at the San Jose Improv. And then for the 2025 dates, we're going to start off really early and strong. We're going to start off in Seattle, Washington. January 3rd and 4th, I am in Seattle, Washington. January 9th, Riley, North Carolina. Oh, this is a new one. This is a new date. New date alert. February 6th through the 8th, I will be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, February 6th through the 8th. Um, then, why am I doing February 1st? January. Uh, January 16th through the 18th, I'll be in Washington, D.C. January 16th through the 18th, Washington, D.C., February 21st through the 23rd, I will be in Chicago, Illinois. And April 11th and 12th, I will be in Toronto, Canada. And of course, I'm adding more cities. I'm adding more dates. So just stay tuned. But if you're in and or around any of the cities that I listed, go ahead and click the ticket link in the details of this podcast and get your tickets. Also, hit that subscribe button right now. Uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And um, yeah, when you're done listening, share this with somebody. Okay. So y'all could talk about it. So y'all could be like. <laughs> y'all was ain't upset. it. Um, okay. So what's up with Z? The reason why I was late. Last week on a podcast, some of you may remember, I spoke directly to Michelle Obama. I was being funny. I was like, oh, I'm in Michigan. And I realized that Michelle is in Michigan. Michelle, you should just come to my show. I cut that clip and then I posted it online. I posted it on my Instagram. Um, and so many people were adding the tagging Michelle in the, in the comments. And um, somebody reached out, somebody from her team, I'm not going to name any names, um, but somebody from her team reached out and was like, hey, th your video is so funny. Uh, you know, we love you. Mo loves you. Can you come? Like, she can't come to the show. <laughs> she can't come to the show, but can you come to the rally? And I was like, I was like, where's the rally? She was like, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make it so that you meet both VP Harris. You get a photo, you have a photo opportunity with her and you'll be able to, you know, see Michelle. And I'm like, 
girl, where the rally at? Um, and now I'm not from Michigan. I was in Detroit. And as much as like my family lives in Michigan, some of my family lives in Michigan. I was in Detroit. The rally was in Kalamazoo. So as much as I was like, yeah, I'm there. I had no idea. I had no idea how far there was from me. Kalamazoo is two hours. It's like legit, no traffic, a two hour drive from Detroit to uh, Kalamazoo. But then I ran into two types of traffic. I ran into University of Michigan traffic because they were having a sporting event. And then as I got closer and closer and closer to the rally, I'm running into the rally traffic, right? So instead of it taking two hours for me to get there, it takes me like three and a half hours to get there. And I, and I, I call myself leaving early. I call myself leaving an hour and a half early. That traffic ate that hour and a half up. When I got there, it was pretty difficult to logistically to get into the rally. Like, so when I got there, obviously there's like um, a certain radius that's just blocked off, right? They're not letting any like civilian cars get through. And so I pull up to a police officer's car and I'm like, hey, um, is there any way for me to like get through? And they were like, no, you actually have to park. Like there's a designated parking lot and then you have to shuttle over. That's what everyone has to do. And I was like, oh, okay, well, how, you know, how long do the shuttles take? And he was like, I'm not really sure. And I was like, well, if I park at the parking lot, you know, at this, at this designated parking lot, can I just walk? And he was like, oh yeah, you can totally walk, but it's going to be about three miles. And I was like, Cause he playing in my face. Right. Um, and I'm like, no. Okay. So then I'm thinking about like, all right, I'm there. And I, I know that I'm not going to be able to stay for the whole thing because my first show that night is at 7 PM and I can't miss my shows. Um, but I'm still, I still want to, it's like, I drove all the way there and I want to try my best. Right. When I, when I like planned out the logistics of it all, I'm like, I'm gonna get inside and then have to turn right back around. And even if I turn right back around, even if I run in and be like, hey, y'all, and then go right back out, I still may um, have difficulty with the shuttles getting back to the parking lot and then traffic going back into Detroit. Because if you know anything about Detroit, everything, all of the all of the kind of like festivities, the activities, all of the big things are all in a concentrated area downtown. So it's like the, all the theaters are there, the clubs, the uh, arenas, the, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I know that it's a Saturday night and I'm going back into the city. I'm going to run into traffic. So I felt really bad, but I had texted the contact that I had, who, that I was talking to, that was arranging everything for me. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but I didn't realize, you know, I, I didn't know all what it took to get, to get in, get to and into a rally. I thought you just show up. <laughs> no, it is much more difficult. Like, you know, when I see people like, um, at rallies on television, I, I didn't, I didn't know you have to be intentional. So everybody that we see at a rally, whether they are um, at the rally that you are in support of or the other candidates that you're not in support, just know they want to be there. Just know that it was intentional. Just know that they didn't just walk up like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just go here today. No. Even for me to take a picture with VP Harris, they had to do a background check. And there was there was a lot to have to, to do before it was approved. And so when I got there and realized like I wasn't going to be able to not even go inside, I was like, dang. So I, I texted the contact and I was like, I'm so sorry. And then I told her the situation and she was like, no, she was like me and Mo. That's what she was calling Michelle Obama. She was like me and Mo, we're landing right now. I was like, well, I mean, should I drive to the private jet runway? She was like, we're landing right now. I'm so sorry. I was like, yeah. I was, she was like, you can't even come in for a little while. I was like, I just, I can't risk missing my show. I, you know, I, I just can't do it. Um, and so I turn back around and I drive all the way back to Detroit. I make it back in time for my, just in time for my show. So I'm in my car for like five and a half, maybe six hours. Right. And like, not, I mean, it was, it was a, it was a good trip. I understand why she had a rally in Kalamazoo because. Anywho, um, so because I could not make it to the Michigan event, the contact that I was in touch with was like, hey, Michelle's doing a rally in um, Atlanta. Are, are you interested? And 
they were like, you know, there's going to, you know, it's going to be like Kerry Washington, D. Knight, like it's going to be all of these, you know, like um, speakers. And it, it should be a good time if you're able to make it. Is that something that you're interested in? And I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm going I'm to fly all the way to it. Y'all, I was so tired. Like I flew from Detroit to, I was already away from home for 10 days. I flew from Detroit to Los Angeles Sunday morning. And then I didn't go home. I never went home. I went, my, I had like this activity plant with my friend, you know, like I'm pretty busy at this point. You guys even hear like my voice is getting a little bit stressed. Um, I'm pretty busy at this point, but you also still have to make time for like your friend, like your personal life. Right. And so me and my friend, we had this kind of like bike ride, something, something planned. It was a planned activity uh, that we had to make reservations for. It was an all day event. So I land in LA. I drive like an hour and a half to, you know, North of LA to, to for this, I mean, pumpkin patch, something, something, but really it's just like quality time with my friend. Um, and then and, and then that was an all day thing. I woke up Monday morning at 5 a.m. I went for another one of those morning runs where the sun ain't up. So your, your, your run time is very fast. Your pacing is very fast because you ain't trying to get murdered or essayed um, or kidnapped or whatever. Um, and, and then my day was so busy. It was so busy. I did not get home. I woke up at five. I did not get to sleep until maybe two o'clock in the morning. And... Then I got on a flight. Then I got on a flight to Atlanta to go to this nonpartisan rally because it's really to register and promote voting. It's not really campaigning for any specific candidate, but just really energizing people to get out there and vote. Um, and so I get there and um, they they tell me that like I'll, that I'll I'll have access to like this VIP reception before the rally, um, and then the, and then the rally happens, which is exactly what it's like. The VIP reception is like Shonda Rhimes spoke, Sierra spoke, see, like you know Shonda Rhimes from like Grey's Anatomy, Bridgerton, etc. Sierra, my goodies, my goodies, my goodies. With you, with you, my goodies. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, uh, a bunch of speakers from, you know, um, WNBA players to TV executives to sponsor, like a bunch of uh, people. There were hors d'oeuvres and drinks and all of that type of stuff. Um, and then the rally happens and the, the, the rally, this like, you know, energizing the vote because it's like it's, it, the, it's called When We All Vote. It's basically like a concert. Because and, and like and Michelle Obama was the headliner, but it was like Sierra came out and did a speech. Um, Marseille Martin, Kerry Washington, uh, Tom Hanks's wife, um, uh, Victoria Monet. Um, there were performances. Uh, Lene Vani and um, why am I blanking on his name? There were two hosts. I'll put their pictures up. Um, they were fantastic. Um, I actually saw him perform at the Hollywood Bowl. That's when I first saw him, but my friend loves him. Okay, um, it was just star-studded event, okay? Star-studded, perform musical performances, um, Clark Atlanta, um, Drumline, everything, right? And then Michelle came out, did her speech, and it was fantastic, as expected. Um, it, was, it, was, it was really fantastic. Um, and then when it's done, when it was done, I was like, dang, I really want to meet her, but I don't want to impose. I don't want to ask. And I know y'all are thinking, like, you flew all the way from L.A. to Atlanta. You better ask. But I was like, I'm, I'm that type of person, like, well, one, if I'm just being, like, completely transparent, part of it is just, like, fear and not wanting to seem, like, thirsty and not wanting to be rejected. But then there, there is that genuine part that doesn't want to impose, you know? Um, and so I was, about to, I was about to leave. I had made myself comfortable with just attending the event. And then something was like, Zainab, stop, don't, don't just listen. Why are you playing yourself? Why, why, why are you doing this? 
And so I texted the contact and I was like, hey, that was a really wonderful event. I'm, you know, I'm going to head out. And she called me and she was like, what? Where you at? And I was like, um, I was like, oh, I'm in section 101. And she was like, okay, wave so that I could try and find you. And she was like, okay, I see you. Come down, you know, come down, come down to me. And so I came down and she was like, why, what you mean you leaving? What are you talking about? And then she's like, come with me. She walks me backstage to like this, you know, kind of like, like the VIP, like after party. Right. And I walk in and it's not, it's a, it's a small space, but like, um, you know, curated for it to be like an after party for the Michelle Obama's event. Um, and it's not a lot of people in there yet. Um, but there are three celebrity women. When I walk in, there are three celebrity women. Let's just call them three amigas, right? When I say, I'm not saying names because I ain't trying to be messy. Um, but three celebrity women that are big celebrity women that we all know, that I believe we all love. Um, I, I definitely love them. As soon as I walked in and saw them, because it's a small... When I tell y'all the space was probably smaller than this hotel room, this hotel room is pretty big, though. It got a kitchen, and, and it's big. But it was pretty small. So when I walk in and I see them, I ain't going to pretend like I don't see you. So I walk right to them. Two of them are standing, and one is sitting down. And I walk to who I would say is the most known one. The most. It's like, I don't think nobody don't know her, right? Um, and so I go right to her. I go right to all of them. And I'm like, you guys do not know me, but I, I am such a fan. I love y'all. And they was looking at me like, <laughs> but I did not stop. I persisted. I reached out my hand and I was like, I'm Zainab. It's nice to meet y'all. And I'm looking around and I'm really like, you know, putting on that voice that's like non-assertive and non-threatening and, and all of that type of stuff. Um, and the most famous one, she reaches her hand out. She's not super welcoming to me at all, actually. Um, she, but she reaches out her hand and she says, I'm so-and-so. But y'all, when I say she the most famous one, I couldn't even let her be like, I'm so-and-so. When she said, I'm so-and-so, I said, girl, you know, I know, of course I know who you are. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Like I said, I'm Zainab. And so then I turned to the one that's sitting down and she, she didn't reach her hand out. She was like, did she reach her hand? I can't remember, but she was like, very like no energy like I'm not really interested in meeting you she was like I'm so and so <laughs> then the last one because it's like all right this one spoke to me this one spoke to me so I'm just so so I go to the third one and I'm like and let me just tell y'all, as much as the first one is like the most famous, the third one is like, in my opinion, like an undeniable, like un, like a beast at her talent, a beast, like, like exceptional, in my opinion. She, she works so much and I still think she's underrated because her talent is so spectacular. So I go, I'm Zainab. She didn't say nothing. <laughs> didn't say nothing. Didn't even really smile. I kind of was like, didn't even say her, didn't even like say her name to me. She was like, so I said, oh, well, nice to meet y'all. And I turned around and walked away and basically was rejected. <laughs> basically was rejected. And it's, it's crazy because I'm a person that's really comfortable going to places by myself. I did that whole thing all by myself. Most people need another person or at least a drink, an alcoholic beverage or some sort of something to quiet their social anxiety. I just be like, I just be feeling everything 100%. <laughs> it 
it would have been really good to have a friend to turn somebody to turn to like, damn, that was right, girl. Damn, right. It would have been great. But that did not happen. I just took the rejection. I took the non-acceptance of me <laughs> and I walked to the other side of the room. But here's what's crazy. As soon as I get to the other side of the room, a woman touches my arm, takes my hand, holds my hand and says, I love you so much. I love everything you do. I watch your videos all the time. I watch your comedy all the time. I just was watching something today. What was it today I was watching? I said, oh, you watched the clip about uh, not sharing location. She said, yep, that's it. That's, that is exactly it. You are so funny. Don't stop doing what you're doing. You are so funny. Then she says, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so. She related to, the th to one of the three amigas and turned to her and was like, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so. And I wanted to be like, well, so-and-so was not very nice to me. So that's crazy that you got so much love for me because so-and-so was a bit standoffish. But I didn't say that. I was like, thank you. Because here's the thing. Here's what I recognize. Alhamdulillah, I'm taken care of. I'm taken care of because I, my rejection couldn't sit with me for two seconds before somebody else affirmed me, before someone else reassured me, before someone else said, you exactly where you supposed to be in this moment. Anywho, I sit down. I, you know what I'm saying? I'll look around the room. I say hi to, you know, whoever I could say hi to. And um, I sit down because, you know what I'm saying? Like... My sister girls, they, they wasn't very friendly. And so let me, just, let me just sit my behind down and wait for Michelle to get here, right? After a little while, Michelle walks in. And I'm talking about a matter of minutes. Michelle walks in and everybody runs to her, including the three amigas. I'm talking about run. I'm talking about Shakari Richardson run, okay, to Michelle Obama. They crowd around her and just praising her, which was really wonderful to watch, which happens. I've seen that happens to me. When I just get off stage, people gonna come around me and be like, that was so funny, that was so good, that was da 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 da. I've watched it happen with Dave Chappelle. Soon as Dave Chappelle get off stage, everybody that's in the green room, soon as he get back into the green room, everybody gonna crowd around him and be like, when you said this, that was so funny, that was dope when you said this. Oh, maybe you should say this, you so da 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 They just gonna praise, 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 praise the headliner. This is a part of life, right? And I loved it. I loved it. I was just sitting there looking up at her and I was like, yo, that is Michelle Obama. I was just playing last week, making a video talking about Michelle should come to my show. And I'm just sitting like literally arm's length. I'm just sitting just, I'm, I'm arm's length away from Michelle Obama. I'm not about to say nothing or do nothing because the three of me guys kind of, you know what I'm saying, kind of made me feel like I should just sit my ass down so I ain't going to really do nothing. But I just, I'm so happy to just sit here and watch her. And this is something that you guys should know about me. I've never been like a fanatic. I never really been, I'm fascinated. I keep looking over here because it's like, this is where she was to me when I was sitting down. I, I, I am so fascinated by Michelle Obama. I have been from the beginning, from the moment we met her, from the moment we met her, I have been fascinated by her, which I won't get into right now. My friend asked me who encouraged me to go. She was like, well, why are you so fascinated by her? And then I told her and she was like, yeah, you should go. You should go to Atlanta. And I was like, but I'm so tired. I don't think, I, I was my friend Sabrina. I was like, I don't think I have it in me. Just the traveling. Um, and she was like, uh, she, she was like, but I, from what you said, I think you should go. And like the only other, the only other celebrity, the only other public figure in my life that I felt like I would maybe lose my wits if I met them is like Michael Jackson. And I never met Michael Jackson, but that's the only person who I thought could kind of make me, you know what I'm saying? Lose my wits. It's him. And and I realized it's Michelle Obama that I'm just like. So while everybody is gushing over her, including the three amigas. At some point. Not shortly after everybody runs over to her and she's talking, she turns and looks to her left and she sees me sitting down and she goes. Ah! Comes over to me excited like super excited you guys 
comes over to me, pulls me up out the seat, gives me like a, the most wonderful hug. And it's like, you made it. And I was like, I did, I did. And then she turns me around to everybody and is like, this is Zainab Johnson, you guys. She is so funny. Like, you don't understand. This girl is so, so funny. Like, I mean it. Like, Siri, I'm, I'm not even paraphrasing. I'm quoting her verbatim. Like, Siri, you know how Michelle talks. She was like, like, seriously funny. Like, like you got to watch her. You got to watch her special on Netflix. Now, here's the thing. Everybody know her jabs off is on Prime. But I wasn't about to correct Michelle Obama. I just ain't have it in me to correct Michelle Obama. And it's so funny because later on in the night, her contact that I was talking to, she was like, as soon as I went over to her, she said, did she say Netflix? She know it's on Prime. And I was like, she did, but I wasn't about to correct her. She said, girl, I wish you would have corrected her. And I was like, maybe, maybe this was the first encounter. Maybe after the second or third encounter, I could be like, well, you know, Mo, actually, Let me tell y'all though, when she said, when she came over to me and hugged me, y'all know the three of me guys was like this. So now everybody, it's like, yeah, you were so closed off to me, but now the person that everybody is here to see just gave me like the warmest embrace and the kindest introduction to a room of really powerful people you know um and I was standing I was standing next to her for a while and then I was like is it weird that I'm just standing you know I'm just like am I <laughs> you know I was standing next to her like the um like the protective friend um so then I was like okay let me you know let me kind of move and then I tripped over Victoria Monet a little bit and I felt bad uh <laughs> But she was sweet. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And she was like, no, 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 it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I actually tripped over a chair because that's how small the room was. But then me trying to, like, balance myself, I think I, I, I might have, like, used Victoria Monet as a. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was Tuesday evening. And y'all know normally I, t I uh, record Tuesday and then I release it on Wednesday. And then Wednesday and then Wednesday morning, I flew back very early in the morning and I went right from my, my flight was delayed and I went right from the airport. I went to my house when my braider was at my house ready to start my hair. And that's why that's 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 why it's, that's why it's late. Um. Let's get into these main topics. <laughs> oh, this is the, I know, I already know y'all going to say I'm unreasonable. I already know it. I did not. I, my managers texted like, send us our picture of you and Michelle. And I said, I chickened out. I did not get a picture. Here's why I, I wanted a picture, y'all. I wanted a picture so bad. I, I, if I am favored in the way that I believe that I am, then there is an event photographer who caught the way she hugged, caught the hug when she hugged me. Here's the thing. Here's why I didn't ask for a picture. Nobody had their phones out. We're going to talk about it later, like read in the room. Nobody had their phones out. And I think when you're in a room with a bunch of people who are like noteworthy people and then nobody got their phone out, I just kind of feel like, you know, I'm going to just follow the energy in the room. Like, this is not about, you know what I'm saying? I'm fangirling. Even Michelle said it. She was like, yeah, this girl is stalking me. And I was like, she said it in jest. And I was like, I kind of, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not, not proud of that. Like, I felt like Leonardo DiCaprio in a Titanic. Just the other night, I was sleeping under a bridge and now... Here I am on the grandest ship in the world having champagne with you fine people. <laughs> I'll take some more. That's how I felt. I felt like I was just last week playing, talk about, come on, Michelle, come to my show. We're going to send you a black car to like you, like to you.
letting me know that like not only you know not only do you know who I am, but you are a fan. Um, and let me just tell you something. And it, and I, and it was a lot of people that day that were spoke like really wonderful words to me. Um, and and I think what was so lovely about the whole experience um, was that sometimes I forget that the people that I admire um, also admire me. Like the people that entertain me are also entertained by me. The people who I'm inspired by are also inspired by me. And I don't know. I just, so whatever. Was I unreasonable for not getting a picture, y'all? <laughs> okay, main topics. First one. As you know, last week um, in Texas, at one of Kamala's rallies, one of her many rallies in Texas, um, Beyonce, the wonderful Beyonce and the wonderful Kelly Rowland um, uh, introduced, they, they both did speeches and introduced um, Kamala, right? And... Uh, and it seemed to be like a, it, it, I mean, I, I only saw really good, I only saw really good comments. And then Trump has his rally in like Wisconsin or something. And the first thing he says is, They got Beyonce. They said, ladies and gentlemen, they said Beyonce is coming to sing. And she came, but she didn't sing. And then Kamala came on as Beyonce was leaving without singing even one song. And they booed the hell out of both of them. <laughs> it's like, all you got to do is watch and see that it did. Like, like th this is the thing about Trump. And I said it in like my, I think I have some stand up here on YouTube where I talk about it. I think it's in the, this is wild clip. Trump lies and his lies are easily provable. That's why at any debate, it, they just be like, well, right after he finished the sentence, they'd be like, okay, well, this has been fact-checked. That is not true. This has been fact-checked time and time again. That is not true. It was not true. It's never true. It isn't true now. It's not true. And he'd be like, I don't care. I'm still saying, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what you say. My, what I say is the truth. I don't care what you say. Oh, you? Oh, y'all proved it? Y'all got facts? I don't care. <laughs> Please give a big, loud, Texas welcome to the next president of the United States, Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, I can't play y'all the full clip of the pass off from, you know, Beyonce and Kelly to Kamala because, you know, Beyonce has approved for Kamala to use, the campaign to use um, her song. But if I even let that video play a little bit, this video will be taken down. So. Kelly! Um, but so, okay. So Trump does what he does. Right. And tries to say like, mm, and they got booed because Beyonce didn't sing. First of all, of course, of course, if you, any, if you happen to be in any room with Beyonce and she decides to sing, even if it wasn't planned, that's a treat. Right. But let me just tell you what them people was not expecting. They was not expecting. Now, would they have been thrilled if she sang? Absolutely. But did they expect, what, what did you expect Beyonce to sing? Did you think she was about to be up there talking about freedom, freedom, I can't lose? Freedom cut me loose? Or is it freedom, freedom, I can't win? Um, so then Matthew knows, Beyonce's father. Um, I guess, you know, at some point TMZ caught up to him and was like, so how did you feel about what Trump said? And um, Matthew said, um, cause I'm quoting him right now. He said, I can unequivocally say no one was booing. That's just a lie. Then he went on to say, everyone has the right to their own perspective, but they don't have the right to lie. But let me tell you something about Donald J. Trump. <laughs> what he going to do is lie. Okay. Whether you like him or don't like him, he going to lie. Whether he is on time or late, he going to lie. Whether his face is white or red, he going to lie. Uh, whether somebody is at the rally or not at the rally, whether he got the biggest rally in history or the smallest, he going to lie. What he is going to do is lie, especially when he's jealous, because what, what we know, and here's the thing, here's the thing about people who support Trump. They be having such a hard time telling the truth, right? 
regardless of how you feel about Trump, regardless of how you feel about his policy, what he's going to do with this country, what I can guarantee you is he would love to be introduced by Beyonce Knowles and Kelly Rowland. What he would love is for all of the celebrities Law and Order, Sam, uh, Sam, what's his name? The DA from Law and Order was like, this guy's, we, this guy's terrible. We got to get Marvel. The Marvel Cinematic Universe was like, Iron Man supports Kamala. He, he wishes, he wishes that like the cool celebrities. Now, again, I don't know what's going to happen come next week. I have no idea what happens, but he wishes, he wishes that all of the coolest celebrities he wishes he got, he got the hermits. He got the roasters. He got the podcast bros that that are just like him. But he don't got the cool people. He would love it. He would love it if Beyonce look if Beyonce looked his way, but all he gonna get from Beyonce is a cease and desist. <laughs> Beyonce is gonna look at Trump like the three amigas looked at me. <laughs> all right. Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion has a new documentary. Um, I think it's called, um, in, 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 I think it's called Megan Thee Stallion in her own words. And I, so there's a clip going viral. Um, and the clip has to do with um, Tory Lane shooting her in the foot. And then she did an interview on Gail, with Gail King. And Gail King asked her if she had had any sexual relations with Tory Lanez and she said no and Megan the Stallion on this documentary admits that she lied to Gail King this clip is going viral yes I lied to Gail King I probably know that you're gonna ask me about this I just want to talk about the shooting why did you ask me about Tory that's not what this is about even if I was I like once maybe twice on drunk night kept catching me out of my mind you have an intimate relationship with him like sexual? Yeah, yeah. Did you have, <laughs> did you, Megan, did you have a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez? Yes, that's my question. Um, I didn't have a sexual relationship with Tory. Before I talk about it, before I talked about it, I wanted to watch, I didn't watch the whole documentary, but I wanted to at least watch every, because it's like a two hour movie. I wanted to at least watch everything that led up to her saying that, right? Because, you know, some things taken out of context is like, it's just, it's just for exactly what it did, the clickbait, right? So I watched probably the first hour of the documentary. Um, it's a good documentary. It's a good documentary. It's not mind blowing at all, but it, it, it's really inspiring to watch people's journey. You know, like we, 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 we first are introduced to her mom and her mom's uh, pursuit and aspirations to be an entertainer. Um, and then, and Megan's, um, sort of her fascination with her mom, her love for her mom, her wanting to, like her mom literally being like her, her, her hero. Um, and then eventually her sort of becoming exactly what the mom, like I'm talking about the mom, like living vicariously through, like she became everything her mom ever hoped to be. And her mom was like her biggest fan, her momager, her like, and, and here's the thing, it's a, it's a very interesting dynamic because if you know anything about Megan, Megan Thee Stallion, she's mostly naked, she's twerking all the time. There's a thing called the Megan Knees, right? And she was like, her mom would take video footage of her and she would make sure like, okay, I got your, I got your ass just right. I don't know a lot of mamas that's like that. I don't know a lot of mamas that's gonna be like, now pull, now pull your titty out, okay, I got that. I don't even know if Tokyo Tony was talking like that. 
But she would show her mom like with her in rehearsal, with her in the studio, and she would rap like the lyrics. And then her mom would be like, that's good, that's good, but you got to say it like this. You, you saying it like this, but you got to really hit that last word like this. It's really, really nice to watch. And then you see, her, you see the progression of her, of her success. And then we have this incident in 2020 um, where she is, um, you know, she alleges that Tory, Tory Lanez shot her in the foot. And she says that initially she was trying to protect him. There's all of this. There's this George Floyd just happened. She's not feeling safe with police officers. She's feeling concerned about his life. So she's trying to protect him. Ultimately, they take this entire thing to trial. He is found guilty. Now we have this documentary close to four years later, and she is saying she lied. She, Gail King asked her, did you have sexual relation? And she hit her with the same thing Bill Clinton hit us with back in whatever years he was president. I don't know, I, was a, I feel like I was a kid. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. And she was like, no, I did not. And just like Bill Clinton had to come out after and be like, I did. I'm sorry, I did have sexual relations with that person. Now, y'all let me know if I'm unreasonable or not. Let me know what y'all would have did. I'm going to be very honest. I would not have revealed that on the documentary. Even if I revealed that while we were filming, in the edit, I would have been like, mm, let's take that out. And here's why. Two reasons. One, all of the people that berated you, that called you a liar, that was like, this is about you. Because here's the thing, and, she, and I get what she was trying to do. I know I didn't finish my sentence. I'm sorry, y'all. Here's what Megan Thee Stallion was trying to do. Because lies can burden us, right? It can burden us with guilt. Sometimes we got to, like, you know how they say, the truth will set you free. So I think she's like, okay, I want to be honest about this. But I have to do it on my own terms and like the title of the documentary in my own words. And I don't want to just tell y'all the truth, but I want to tell y'all why I lied. And so hopefully y'all can understand why I lied. I don't think it matters because the people that did not want to believe you, they don't want to believe you. The people that, because, she, and she says it on the documentary, she's like, at the time, First of all, she felt like she was blindsided. She, that's not a question that she knew um, Gail was going to ask her. And she was confused as to why Gail asked her that. This is about a man that, that assaulted me with a deadly weapon. This is about a man who I thought was my friend. This is, a, this is about a man who I had a relationship with, sexual or not. This is about a man that I trusted. And... To my surprise, he did some wild, whack shit to me. And so why would you ask that question? Because that only muddies the water. What do, so what if I slept with him or not? But at the time, if every single podcaster, if every single media personality is like, she fucking him, she fucking him, she fucking him, she just mad, she fucking him. They trying to railroad a black man. They trying to rip, because she fucking him, she fucking him, she fucking she lying, she fucking him. If you getting that all the time and you trying to keep the focus on, but wait, y'all, remember he shot me. It's like how I told y'all in the, um, the freak off episode. Yeah, everybody focusing on homosexuality. Everybody focusing on baby oil. You ain't nobody focusing on the lack of consent. Abuse. So, yeah, sometimes it's the reason why I am one of those, I'm, I'm really one of those tough people where I feel like if you essay, then there should be very detrimental consequences for you. If you lie, if you lie and pretend to be a victim of SA, I think there should be very serious consequences for you too. But here's the thing. I can't even acknowledge that, yes, sometimes women do lie about SA for whatever reason. Sometimes they do lie. I can't even bring that into a conversation because, one, it's not nearly 
it does not nearly compare to the amount of SAs that are actually happening. And all you got to do is bring up one woman lying about SA for the whole, for everybody to be like, see, told you, now we can't believe nobody. So that's, so I understand why she's like, no. I understand why she lied. Here's the reason why I would not have admitted it. Because one, them same people that was talking about you way back when, they just going to be like, see, yup, told you so. They not going to care about the why. They only going to care about the what, which is you lied. Like they said that you did. Also, and I'm no, you know, I'm not a lawyer. If you want any legalese, I suggest you go listen to Holding Court with Ebony K. Williams. That's a podcast that I enjoy listening to because she breaks things down from a legal perspective. Um, but the thing about the court of law is they don't have to prove that you lied about the accusation they don't have to prove that you lied about the alleged criminality all they got to do is prove that you lied because if they could prove that you lied about one thing then well if you lied about this one thing then maybe you lied about that one thing if you lied about this then you lied about that how do we know so let me tell you what what i know is tory lanes is on his burner phone right now tory lanes is on his burner phone right now with his legal representation talking about, could you cut that clip? Make sure y'all pull that clip off the internet. Take it to the judge first thing in the morning and please file a motion. I would like an appeal. <laughs> so what y'all think? Would y'all have, do y'all think it was, do y'all think she should have admitted that on the podcast? Do you think, what y'all think? Um, and then, okay, before we get out of here, um, Angel Reese. Uh, WNBA star Angel Reese and former NBA star Shaquille O'Neal um, sat down together on Angel Reese's podcast and um, here watch the video Lynch, and you don't, don't don't strike this from the tape Christian we ain't striking it don't 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 I'm telling you, you just lower like that to where it gives your ability to dunk bro imagine you in I'm not same, imagining on, let me finish imagine you in the same little Shirt you had on at the Wild and Out show, Duncan. You know how many T-shirts you gonna sell, cause you tripping. Oh my what? God! <laughs> what? Oh God. The same little shirt you had on. Okay, the all, right. Show, all, right. You, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So it's 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 cringeworthy, right? It's giving the ick, as the as the young kids say, as the young girls say, it's giving the ick. Um, as I said earlier, this is not rocket science. Um, three words. Read the room. Read the room. Read the room. It's that simple. Um, I can go two ways with this. I can give Shaquille O'Neal the absolute benefit of the doubt and say, um, nope, he has complete respect for her. He's not sexualizing her. He didn't mean any harm by it. Um, he didn't mean any disrespect by it. Um, even still... It's pretty awful. And here's why. Because no woman, no woman or man, no, no, no person would ever say to an NBA player, you know what? Yo, if you it you know what, you should, you should put you should put your dick on a t-shirt. You dunking with your dick out. Put that on a t-shirt. Um, and you you'll sell, you'll make the most you'll make the most money you ever made in your life. It's such a slap in the face because it 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 sort of diminishes her to just a sexual object, right? She's an attractive girl. She's a young woman. She has a nice body. Um, most times, girls that have nice bodies they flaunt it, unless they unless for some reason their family, their religion, their culture really really imposes modesty on them for the most part you know they 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 explore that they are that, that 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 the freedom to express themselves with their bodies and some in a lot of times that's an uncovering of the bodies i wouldn't have wore it at no point ever in my life cuz it just that looked like something you put on a baby you know what i'm saying that looked like something that you that's that looked like something that you unsnap you know at, at the at the at the private sector, that looked like something that you about to change a baby's diaper in. You get what I'm saying? So I, I would have never worn it, but she she wore it, and it was revealing. And um, but she's also to say, I think I think it would have just been better to say, 
you know, you got a nice body. That's straightforward. It's still kind of icky because he's drastically older than her. And also she has said in multiple publications that she sees him as a father figure, a mentor, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's giving yuck. Um, but here's another thing that I just would like to propose. Um, even she tried to stop him like, oh, ta -ta, and he was like, he kept going, which, which that was actually more gross than anything to me. Because it's like sometimes you ever, you ever be in conversation with somebody and they saying the wrong thing and you try to stop them and they really insist, they insist on being problematic. It's like, okay, so this is what you, you, you have been enabled to do this, which that's not, that is not rocket science, right? Shaquille O'Neal is a humongous man, um, a very wealthy man, and has been a star athlete for most of his life. So I'm not surprised that him expressing himself in whatever way he wants, however he wants, when he wants, has been enabled. I'm also not surprised at his delusion that he didn't think that there was anything wrong with what was happening. This is something else. This is another part of it that I just want to put out there. There is a difference between what is ideal, what we hope for, what we wish could be versus reality. The reality is you got your butt cheeks out. It's going to be hard for men to not be completely consumed with your butt cheeks. I ain't trying to blame the victim at all. I am avidly against the notion of, um, well, if I'm wearing something revealing, that means that you have permission to touch me or that means that something should happen to me. That means I was asking for it. No. I am adamantly against that. But the reality is, men, if you got your butt cheeks out, men, men going to be, they, that's what, that's, that's what they going to care about, your butt cheeks. It sucks because we wish. We wish we could have our butt cheeks out and nobody care, right? We wish, we, wish that, we wish that we could have our butt cheeks out and when I'm talking to you about basketball, you stay on the topic of basketball. That's what we wish. That's what we hope, but that is not the reality. So sometimes as we're doing things, we have to consider what is the reality. My reality when I went for a run this morning at 5 o'clock this morning and it was pitch black outside, the reality is while I want to put my headphones in and have it blasting, and while I, while, I, while I wish that I was completely safe and while I wish that no one was watching me and while I wish that I could run any time of the day and not have to be concerned with my safety, that's not the reality. So, so in one of my hands, I have a flashlight. In my other hand, I have a can of mace. I do not have my ear pods when I'm running. I do not have on any music when I'm running. I got to see everything. I got to hear everything. I have to make sure that I am seen and heard. And if anything happens, I have to give myself the opportunity to protect myself. That's the reality. I can't imagine somebody saying, yo, you are so funny, but if, pull, pull your titties out though. Yo, you see that when you had, yo, you tell that joke, you tell that, you, you put that joke with your ass on a t-shirt, most money you ever make in your life. You, it's funny though. Your jokes are hilarious. Like, like, but if you add, if you add your butt cheek, if you put a picture of your butt cheeks on a t-shirt with the joke, call your accountant cause you got money. All right, um, 
let's get into this Ask Z before I get up out of here. Okay, this Ask Z comes from, I'm just going to call him Omar. Um, Salam Zainab, put down whatever you're reading or drinking because I've got the most twisted, foul, disgusting. So I'm just trying to brighten my screen. I've got the most twisted, foul, disgusting Ask Z for you today. Oh, shoot. This happened to me yesterday, and I need help processing it. I'm a field engineer, and my firm typically works with clients located off the grid. As you can imagine, most of these locations don't have an established plumbing system. In fact, most of the construction guys drop their pants wherever and go with the wind. Oh, do they? Oh, my God. For the more shy and civilized people, there are several porta potties located a short walk away. Yesterday, as we were leaving for the day, I go to use the porta potty. When I close the door behind me, I noticed some poor soul left their phone right next to the toilet opening. Me, not wanting to spray this stranger's phone with any more errant pee particles, I prop it up against the shelf away from the. <laughs> See, Omar. First of all, I don't know how somebody's phone, because what my phone is not going to do is be out when I'm in, using a porta potty, okay? But if I saw somebody else's phone next to the toilet bowl in a porta potty, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. I'm not moving it. Now, am I going to be, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm, you're a man. And so I'm assuming that when you urine, you can aim. I'm not going to purposely try to soil their phone, but I'm definitely not touching it. But okay, you did. So you prop it up against the shelf away from the bowl. In my haste to unbuckle, to unbuckle his pants, the phone falls from the shelf and into the bowl. Now, before I can register what, ha what has happened, by some unholy reflex, by some unholy reflex, my hand shoots into the hole after it and into the waist of hundreds of strangers. Omar, what are you doing? I would not have done that even if it was my phone. Hope is backed up on the cloud. Hope Verizon store is still open. Hope the Apple store is still open because I got to go get a replacement phone. Why? Because it's in the toilet in the porta potty. It ain't at the toilet at the club. It ain't at the toilet in the office. It ain't at a flushable toilet. It's in a porta potty toilet. Just layers and layers and layers of human feces. No. For about five seconds, I'm on my knees. You on your knees, Omar? So not only do you got your arm knee deep in the porta potty, potty toilet, you on your knees. So that means your face. That means your face now is closer to all of the human. <laughs> okay. 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 <sighs> Let me gather myself. <laughs> I'm on my knees internally screaming as I think about the existential choices I have made in the last 26 years that have led up to this moment. Finally, my first lucid thought is, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. So I wade through this primordial soup of human feces. Here's the thing. The SAT words, it's only making it sound worse. If you would have said, so now I'm, I'm waiting through, I'm reaching through the, the shit, then it's like, yeah, that's disgusting. But when you, say, when you get so specific in the description, so I wade through this primordial soup of human feces and waste. I mean, you've really created the visual, Omar. You've really created the visual. Until I find the phone, needless to say, after I clean it off and confirm it still worked. <sighs> I left it where I found it and excused myself to scrub my hand raw. The next few hours were spent contemplating my existence, bleaching my belongings, and praying to the almighty Allah SWT subhanahu wa ta'ala, it wasn't until today that I realized I probably should have left a note. 
Let myself get caught by brown handed or face. Let myself get caught brown handed or faced up to the inevitable ass beating I would have gotten. But here's the thing, Omar, I don't think you would have got an ass beating. You didn't do nothing. You, you, the person who left a phone in it, listen, you a special, you a special individual. Most people would have left that phone in that porta potty or at best did what they needed to do. And then maybe if there were napkins or some sort of tissue in that porta potty, grab that phone out of that porta potty and then walked it out and maybe and maybe gave it to the closest, like, I don't know, construction site or wherever. Like, hey, I think somebody left their phone in the porta potty. But most people would have left it right there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that when I see things like at the gym, especially like you might see somebody leave their headphones, somebody leaves their key. It's like, I just leave it. I leave it right there because most times people are going to come back for it. Most times people are going to retrace their steps. At best, I'll grab it. If I feel like, no, nah, this is like not a place where I think that the person's belongings are safe, then I'm going to take it to like the front desk or wherever. Let me tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not grabbing nobody's phone from the porta potty. I might, I might leave the porta potty and then say to everybody, hey, somebody left a phone in the porta potty. If you if you don't have your phone, you might want to check. Just how they tell you at TSA, hey, you left your you, you hey, hey, somebody left a laptop. Anybody, anybody with a a, a, a a blue 13 inch Microsoft, whatever, HP, whatever, you left your you left your laptop at TSA. But they not grabbing it and running through the airport to get it to you. That's essentially what you did in the most disgusting environment ever. The phone is gone now. But for my question, <laughs> was it reasonable? No. I don't even need to finish the question. No. 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 <laughs> Was it reasonable to expose myself to hepatitis B? No, no. Was it reasonable to expose myself to hepatitis B or whatever STD plague that existed in that group to rescue a phone that's probably going to be replaced anyways? In my head, I at least saved this, this, this guy from always wondering if someone stole it or from continuing to look for something that was lost to void. At what point is being too nice unreasonable? Well, let me tell you, Omar. I'll tell you the exact point where you was too nice and it was unreasonable. When I closed the door behind me, I noticed some poor soul left their phone right next to the toilet opening. Me, not wanting to spray this stranger's phone with my more errant pee particles, prop it up against the shelf. Unreasonable. That's the first moment. That's the, that, I'm pinpointing when you were too nice if you were so nice, it was unreasonable. When you decided to prop up somebody else's phone in a different, that was right next to a toilet in the porta potty and you decided to prop it up, I'll tell you the next point where you were unreasonable. When it falls into the bowl, you get down, you, you reach your arm in and reach through everybody else's shit to get it. Unreasonable. When you got down on your knees, unreasonable. When you got it out, washed it off, made sure that it still worked, unreasonable. There's, first of all, everybody got protection on a phone. I don't know, you didn't specify if it was an a, a iPhone or Android, but what they would have done if it were me is they would have had to find my phone, go to the app, hit the Find My Phone app, locate their phone, activate the sound, it would have led them to the porta potty, and then it would have been their decision. How much you want your phone? You want your phone enough to reach to get down on your knees and reach into a bowl of shit. Multiple strangers shit. Who know who knows when the last time that porta potty was emptied? What's on your phone? How bad you need this phone? <laughs> What would you have done? Am I forever irredeemable for this sin? <laughs> it's not a sin. Um, I told you what I have done. Every step of this letter, I told you what I have done, what I would have done. Uh, they would have got a new phone. Or it would have been their hand being scrubbed raw because it was just shuffling through shit. Yeah. And here's the thing. 
If I left my phone right next to the toilet bowl in a porta potty, I wouldn't have even been mad. If somebody was like, yo, I saw you, your phone is in there and I think it fell into the toilet, I'd have been like, damn, well, can I use your phone real quick and see if Verizon is open? Let me see if there's an Apple store close by. I got to replace my phone. <laughs> the one thing that we can hope from this story is whoever's phone that was, they are sitting there. For, for whatever reason, they are not, they can't do what I am suggesting. And all they needed in life is exactly what you did. And so they are sitting, using their phone, thankful. Thankful. That there was someone like you, nice enough, to do what you did with their phone and make sure that their phone got back to them. All right, that's it for me. This has been, uh, oh, he ended it with P.S., but he spelled P, not just with the letter P, but P-E-E. -E. Um, he said, P.S., huge fan. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course, his name is not Omar, but, you know, I decided to not, like, use you guys' names. I hope I see you in Houston, inshallah. Yes, inshallah, I see you in Houston. And when I do see you in Houston, come up to me and be like, what's up, Zainab? It's Omar. I grabbed the phone, because I, I know your real name. Um, I grabbed the phone out the porta potty Hey, girl. Hey. Um, anyway, that's it for me. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. Um, this has been I'm Reasonable. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Until then, y'all know what to do. Stay reasonable. Bye.